On this episode of Putting Possibility into Practice, November is National Diabetes Awareness Month. According to recent statistics, more than 30 million people, almost 9.5% of the U.S. population, have diabetes. Of those, more than 7 million people are undiagnosed. A whopping 84.1 million adults age 18 or older have prediabetes. Are you at risk? What treatments are available? And what technologies are available to help prevent, monitor, and treat diabetes? We'll answer those questions and more on putting possibility into practice, and it starts right now. And I'm Joe Agostinelli, Social Media Manager at Greenway Health. And as I mentioned in our intro, we are talking Diabetes Awareness Month, which is celebrated uh, throughout the month of November. But as with any of the months and any of the uh, health observances, it's important to keep in mind year-round. And in discussing diabetes awareness, I bring on Dr. Denise Tonner, Diabetes and Endocrine Associates of the Treasure Coast LLC. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tonner, for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me on. Uh, let's just a little background of the practice. Uh, talk a little bit about Diabetes and Endocrine Associates of the Treasure Coast LLC. And for those uh, listeners who may not be in the Florida area, where you guys exactly are located? We are in Vero Beach, Florida. And my partners, Dr. Paul Graham and Bill Laswell, and I have been together in our practice since 2001. And we actually were together before that, before our large clinic uh, disbanded and we went our own ways. And uh, we uh, are the in my opinion, the premier diabetes and endocrine practice in the area. And uh, we probably have over 10,000 patients. And between the three of us have almost 100 years of experience. I hate to say that, but um, so uh, we're the diabetes doc in the area. And let's dive right into the statistics that I mentioned on the intro. I mean, some staggering numbers there. Um, How does someone know if they are at risk for diabetes? Well, there are really four main risk factors, Joe. Um, two that are under your control and two that are not. Um, family history for type 2 diabetes, which is the vast majority of people with di- living with diabetes in this country, is family history. And so even if grandpa got sugar late in life, that still counts. I have a lot of patients who will come in and say, my mom got it when she was 80 or whatever. It doesn't matter. If there's a history of high blood sugar on any of your first-degree relatives, meaning parents, grandparents, brothers or sisters, That is a family history of type 2 diabetes in general. Um, The other um, uh, increased risk factor is age. Uh, Type 2 diabetes in general is more common as we get older, so you have a much higher risk of getting it as you get older. But I'm going to talk a little bit later about that's not always the case, especially in today's society. The other two risk factors are your weight and your lifestyle. So the heavier you are, the higher your risk of getting diabetes, and the more sedentary you are, the higher risk you have of getting diabetes. And are there steps that somebody can take to prevent the onset of diabetes? Absolutely. So, as I said, the two risk factors you can't change are your genetics. You know, you didn't choose your family. You know, that's just a risk that you have. Um, and the other is your age. Um, if you're lucky, you get older. Um, so the two things you can change are your weight and your lifestyle. So trying to reach a healthy weight, And I I hate the term ideal weight because ideal weight for a Victoria's Secret model is different than an ideal weight for me as a middle-aged woman. So I like to use healthy weight as a goal. And the other is lifestyle or exercise patterns. And so if I have someone who's very sedentary, really doesn't exercise at all, their exercise is housework or grocery shopping, my goal for them is to get them out on a 30-minute walk three times a week. And for them, that's exercise. Um, and then, obviously, you try to increase it because even if exercise doesn't change your weight, it definitely changes your blood sugar and your body's response to insulin, and that's what type 2 diabetes is all about. So exercise, healthy lifestyle, and a healthy weight are the things that you really can strive for. And we've uh, you touched on the, the different types of diabetes. So there are indeed different types of diabetes. What are the key differences? Oh, you know, I I say this a lot. I think that there's type 1 and type 2 diabetes are the traditional delineations, but they're such different diseases. We should have different names for them because they're so different. So type 1 diabetes, or used to be called juvenile diabetes, is an absence of insulin. So people with type 1 diabetes, their pancreas just stops making insulin. And insulin is the hormone that takes the food 
for the glucose from our bloodstream and gets it into our cells to use for energy, like putting gas in your car. And if you're not making enough insulin, you're not getting sugar into your cells. And so the sugars tend to then go out in your urine. Those patients have the classic symptoms of diabetes that a lot of people are aware of, like increased thirst, urination, weight loss, um, the blurry vision, etc. And those people need insulin to survive. So a type 1 diabetic, if they do not get insulin within 24, 48, 72 hours, they actually can die. So that is type 1 diabetes. It's an insulin deficient state. That actually accounts for less than 10% of all the patients living with diabetes in the United States. The vast majority, well over 90%, are type 2 diabetics, which have insulin resistance, a very different condition. So in type 2 diabetes, if I were to measure someone's insulin level, it would actually be high because their cells are resistant and the pancreas senses that. And so the pancreas makes more insulin to overcome the resistance in an attempt to keep the sugar down. And that actually works early on in a pre-diabetic stage. But eventually, the pancreas just can't handle that much sugar and then the blood sugar starts to rise. So in a type 2 diabetic, the problem is an insulin deficiency, it's insulin resistance. And the resistance is worsened by age, weight, and sedentary lifestyle and genetics. And you just mentioned that uh, pre-diabetic phase. If somebody has pre-diabetes, does that mean they're automatically going to get diabetes? Absolutely not. If they pay attention to it, address it, they may not cross over that line. Like I tell my pre-diabetics, if you pretend you have diabetes now, hopefully you won't get it. And obviously, it's a continuum. But there are some hard and fast guidelines, primarily for insurance purposes, in terms of what blood sugar readings are. And so a fasting blood sugar under 100 is considered normal. A fasting blood sugar over 125 is considered diabetes. So if you're between 100 and 125, you're in that little gray zone of pre-diabetes. So I try to get my pre-diabetics to pay attention to it, make, just pretend it's diabetes, and hopefully with the right lifestyle changes, et cetera, the blood sugars will come down and you may never cross over into that threshold, into overt or official diabetes. And for those who have crossed over to that threshold and for folks who have been maybe just diagnosed with diabetes, what treatments are there for ongoing care? Oh, my gosh. Okay, this is actually really exciting. When I started doing diabetes care, gosh, 27 years ago, there was beef, pork, insulin, and one oral medication, basically. Now there are probably more than 12 or more classes of medications available to treat type 2 diabetes. So there's there's a lot of treatments. But for sure the first treatment is healthy eating, exercise, and weight loss. And I'm speaking here about type 2 diabetes, type 1 different story, obviously, the treatment's insulin. But for most of our patients we're talking about, it's type 2. And so healthy diet, weight loss, which most patients need, and then exercise of some sort, step number one. Step number two is generally a medication called metformin or glucophage. It's been around for 25 years. It's an amazing medication. It's free at some pharmacies. It's so cheap. Um, It helps your body respond better to your own insulin. So it helps with that insulin resistance. It also can help with some weight loss. There are some ongoing newer studies looking at its use actually in cancer treatment because it helps prevent the growth of abnormal blood vessels. Um, And there are a bunch of doctors who believe that it actually can help decrease cellular aging. So it's a great drug. So everybody gets metformin pretty much to start with. After that, there are numerous medications, but I just mentioned two of the newer ones, which are exciting because... In the past, the medicines we had to treat type 2 diabetes did not help with weight loss. Many of them actually made weight gain a lot easier, so it kind of was at counter purposes. So the newer drugs are not only great for lowering blood sugar, but they can help with weight loss. So the two classes, and the names aren't that important, but I'll just say them because I'm sure there are probably people out there who are aware of them, but the GLP-1 analogs are medicines such as um, Victoza, Trulicity, and Viturion, which are injectable medicines, which are not insulin, but they are a synthetic form of a protein that type 2 diabetics are missing that makes them insulin resistant. So if you give them back that protein, it makes them more insulin sensitive. They do a whole bunch of other great things, and they're 
super safe, wonderful medications that will help lower blood sugar and also help with weight loss. So they are a win-win. The other newer category also, which is another exciting category, is a medication class called the SGLT2 inhibitors. And these are medicines such as Jardian, Invokana, and Farsiga. These medicines actually force your kidney to spill sugar in your urine, which at first thought seems counterintuitive because as a doctor, I was taught that spilling sugar in urine is a bad thing. But in the past, that was a diagnostic test for diabetes. Now, however, we've taken advantage of the fact that we can block a part of the kidney function and make the kidney, rather than recycle the sugar back into your blood, actually force the kidney to excrete it in your urine. So this class of medication also helps, obviously, lower blood sugar and can help with weight loss because as you spill sugar in your urine, you're spilling calories in your urine. So those are two really great newer medications that are at the top of the line in terms of treating type 2 after metformin and diet, weight loss, and exercise. Well, it's good to hear that patients have uh, so many options, and thanks for all the great details on what's available right now for patients who are uh, who are fighting diabetes. You talked about earlier your uh, combined years of experience at the practice, and how have you seen the evolution of Greenway Health Solutions over your uh, career uh, help you guys provide better diabetes care for your patients? Well, Joe, you can hopefully check this out, but my site was one of the first offices in in the whole country to use the electronic uh, chart through WebMD back in the day, and which has morphed into Greenway. And so we've seen a lot of changes. Um, First of all, this electronic chart is fantastic because I can type almost as fast as I can speak. So for me, it's great. But more importantly, um, ICD-10 integration, which is new coding system implemented by Medicare and the insurance companies, has been thoroughly integrated with an expansive database, which you just – everything's there. So it's very complete. It's user-friendly. The searchable database is great and accurate, and it does cross over into the older system to help you update your old code. So that's, that's one of the first things that I think is wonderful. Secondly, um, You know, in a practice like we have where we do diabetes care, which also involves care of cholesterol, blood pressure, um, so many things that require prescriptions, the electronic prescription modality is so wonderful. Um, And my, I brag at my typing skills, but my handwriting skills are not nearly as good. So electronic prescriptions has been a godsend to both myself and my staff. And also, the most recent update here in the state of Florida is now we can actually do controlled substances electronically, which also is very nice. So we're not having to do handwritten blue paper prescriptions with faxing with a lot of nursing and staff time. So I I love the electronic prescription module, which we've been using since it came out. And my patients and the pharmacists probably love it, too, because they can read my prescriptions. Um, And the third thing, which we just um, started in the last year or so, was our patient portal. And um, we um, have a lot of patients who send their blood sugar readings into us. Either they're using monitors, um, they're doing finger sticks, whatever. But we ask a lot of patients, particularly um, if we have new medicines, new insulin regimens, we ask them to send in their blood sugar readings in between appointments. And so now with the patient portal, the patients can actually um, upload it onto the portal. Then we can download it, look at it, send them a message back. Um, Also, the ability of the patients to request prescription refills and ask questions on the portal has so decreased the traffic on our triage phone line. Um, It really has helped the nursing staff a lot, too, and it's a lot more efficient for the patients. So those are some of the highlights that I think have really been exciting in the last couple of years. And any other topics you want to discuss or talk about that we didn't cover? I do want to mention um, continuous glucose monitoring systems, or CGMS, Uh, because I know patients and people out there will see a lot of advertisements on TV for these. Um, This is the newest way for people with diabetes, and it can be either type 1s on insulin or type 2s on insulin generally, Um, a way for them to check their blood sugars without having to stick their finger. And this is like the nirvana for people with living diabetes. So to be able to check your blood sugar without sticking your finger has always been the holy grail of diabetes care, and it's finally here. And so... There are two different systems right now that are um, available. Um, One is called Dexcom. One is called the Freestyle. They're 
both excellent, excellent systems, but the ability to put on a little patch on your skin that has a little catheter that goes under your skin that's about a quarter of an inch and about as big around as a hair um, on your tummy or on your arm, and it automatically measures your blood sugars every one to five minutes, and you either have live transmission of your blood sugars to your iPhone or a receiver, or you're able to just wave a reader over it, and Bluetooth then sends the blood sugar to the reader. Um, it's only These have been out just a couple of years, and we just have more and more patients using them, and they really are revolutionizing diabetes care. And um, it's definitely the way of the future for everyone, I think, with diabetes. Emerging technologies in, in healthcare continues uh, just as just as easy as that with with your uh, with a Bluetooth phone. So um, that's amazing, always great to hear. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Mean, when I when I think back thirty years ago, what was available there there was not even home glucose monitors when I started. There was just urine sticks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, Dr. Tonner, I want to thank you for your time and a lot of great information uh, for folks out there who uh, who are, are are coping with this disease of diabetes. As we mentioned in the intro, 30 million people, and and some of those, uh, about seven or eight million of those people, may not even uh, realize they have diabetes. So, uh, hopefully, uh, somebody out there listening can uh, learn a great deal uh, from this episode. And I thank you for your time. Well, thank you so much for having me on, Joe. And we thank you for listening to this episode of Putting Possibility into Practice, the podcast from Greenway Health. I invite you to visit our website to learn all the product solutions and um, other services that we offer medical practices. You heard Dr. Tonner discuss some of those. You can visit www.greenwayhealth.com. And I invite you to download and subscribe our, to our podcast on your platform of choice. We're now available on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Lipson, and look for more uh, platforms coming soon. Once again, Joe Agustinelli, the social media manager at Greenway Health, and this has been another episode of our podcast, Putting Possibility into Practice.